the story of the finding in Olbia and the identification of the only archaeological discovery to date attributable to the work of the greatest scientist of ancient times. Archimedes of Syracuse began in 1902 when on the seabed off the island of Antikythera, Greek sponge divers found a mass of oxides of bronze, which turned out to be one of the most amazing finds of the entire early history of the Mediterranean. A complex gear with gear wheels assigned to scientific history with the ancient name of the Antikythera mechanism. It was part of the cargo of a ship that probably sailed between 80 and 50 BC from the Greek island of Rhodes to Rome, carrying a variety of other materials of great value, such as the bronze statue known as the Antikythera Ephebi, and intended for members of the Roman aristocracy. The mechanism, made around 87 BC, perhaps by the scientist Posidonius, is a gear with 32 wheels of bronze with triangular teeth, probably contained in a wooden box. The functioning is not yet totally clear. It is believed that the internal gear is operated by turning a crank handle on one side, which turned two hands on the engraved dials on the other side of the box, as in modern clockwork. The hands represent the motion of the sun and moon phases along the zodiac, represented by circles. Perhaps the mechanism was also used to calculate the moon phase and the motion of planets around the sun. In other words, entering data, that is, with the turns of the crank handle corresponding to the days in question. The machine gave information directly on the motions of celestial bodies. It is, therefore, to all intents and purposes, part of the oldest analog computer in history, an ancestor of our computers, because it is a machine that calculates a response that the client does not know. Another amazing anticipation of modern science is the way the gears mesh. The principle, called the planetary gear, was rediscovered only in 1841. The knowledge of astronomy, mathematics and the mechanical properties of the underlying mechanism is mainly the result of Greek science from the 3rd century BC. That is, when scientists linked to the famous library of Alexandria in Egypt, such as Aristarchus of Samos, Erastosthenes of Cyrene, Tetibus of Alexandria, Archimedes of Syracuse, Apollonius of Persia, and others, calculated the diameter of the Earth, the distance from the Sun, and they had probably calculated the planetary motion of celestial bodies and much more with sufficient precision. This was a magic time for ancient science, during which the findings of a research scientist gave impetus to the other and vice versa. It was a result of the patronage of enlightened rulers, patrons of the arts and scientists, such as during the times of the Ptolemies of Egypt, a happy phase of human contemplation unencumbered by ideological or religious taboos. In the summer of 2006, an archaeological area of the former municipal market square in Olvia situated in the ancient Roman settlement was excavated. In an archaeological layer that dates to 160 to 140 BC, a fragment of a gear wheel made of metal was found, the only object known to date to compare to the wheels of the Antikythera mechanism, and therefore assumedly part of a similar mechanism.
The profile of the teeth of the gear wheel of Olbia is not triangular, as in the Antikythera mechanism, but instead follows a special curve, the most suitable type for gear wheels because it minimizes the backlash between the teeth. And also, since the triangular shape may cause the jamming of the rotation. The creation of a crown of teeth with this special profile, more scientifically suited than the triangular one, requires knowledge of a mathematical function called epicycloid, already known at the time of Archimedes, which is also the basis of the motion of celestial bodies like the moon around the earth in relation to the sun and some gears of the Antikythera mechanism. The computerized reconstruction of the gear wheel of Olbia reveals the striking coincidence of the tooth profile with the conjugate and the technically perfect modern gear. It shows a remarkable, even constructive precision, as well as advanced mathematics, despite being made with a certain technology not comparable to the current one and insufficient to build these mechanisms. The gear wheel of Olbia demonstrates the only ancient curved teeth. This realization was not only unknown to those who built the Antikythera mechanism in 87 BC, but it would also remain so for about two millennia. Even Leonardo da Vinci still built wheels with triangular teeth. To rediscover those curves, you have to wait for the in-depth mathematical studies of the 17th and 18th centuries. Our gear is therefore to a higher scientific level than those before the modern age, despite being the oldest known to date, and it shows an extraordinary similarity to the modern ones, thus demonstrating that the inventor had a level of futuristic knowledge 20 centuries ahead. Another amazing aspect of the gear wheel of Olbia is the metallic alloy. It is not bronze, as in the Antikythera mechanism, but brass, a material that has been known of since the 7th century BC, but which was difficult to manufacture, yet much better suited to building a gear than bronze. The scientific knowledge visible in this gear is only partially applied in the Antikythera, which is to be understood as a sign of the significant and rapid decline of the Hellenistic scientific thinking. A decadence whose efforts lasted until modern times. Just this particular gear tooth profile is the basic evidence to suppose that the inventor was a genius and whose scientific thinking was ahead by centuries, even millennia, of his time. From the sources available at the time, the person to fit this description can only be estimated as the mathematician and inventor of the time, not limited only to theoretical studies, but who also applied mechanical construction, Archimedes of Syracuse. We know from ancient literature, especially Cicero, that Archimedes had already built a device to calculate the motion of celestial bodies, thus with functions similar to that of Antikythera. This is the so-called Archimedes Planetarium, which he discussed in his work entitled On Sphere Making, Lost in the Ruin of Part of Ancient Literature. The planetarium was brought to Rome by the consul Marcus Claudius Marcellus, as war booty after the conquest of Syracuse 
in 212 BC, during which Archimedes was killed. Cicero says that the planetarium was still preserved in Rome in 169 BC by Marcus Claudius Marcellus, the namesake nephew of the conqueror of Syracuse. He showed it to his colleague Gaius Sulficius Gallus, amateur astronomer, who wrote about it in his work, which we do not have, and from which Cicero drew the information handed down to us. The following year, Gaius Sulficius Gallus was the deputy commander of the Roman army at the Battle of Pidana in Greece and fought against the Macedonians on June 22nd, 168 BC. The day before the battle, he told the soldiers that an eclipse of the moon would occur during the night, which at the time was considered by the people as an omen of misfortune. He was thus able to exploit the phenomenon in favor of the Romans because only these enemy soldiers were unfavorably impressed by the astronomical event. And it is even probable that the general deliberately chose the day of the battle to follow the night of the eclipse in order to take advantage of this psychological weapon. The fact that this incident took place only a year after Gaius Sulficius Gallus had seen the Archimedes planetarium at the home of Marcus Claudius Marcellus leads us to suppose that the lunar eclipse of the following year had been calculated using the planetarium itself. After these events, we heard nothing more of the Archimedes planetarium. Cicero did not see it directly, but speaks of it around 54 BC, only on the basis of the work by Gaius Sulficius Gallus. It is legitimate to think that if the planetarium was still in Rome, Cicero, a great admirer of the Syracuse scientist, he would certainly have examined it in person. However, we do know the final events of the life of its possessor, Marcus Claudius Marcellus. He commanded the Roman army in Spain to quell a revolt in 152 BC by the Iberians and died in 148 BC in a shipwreck when sailing from Rome to North Africa, sent as an ambassador to King Massinissa of Numidia by the Senate. So, did the piece of gear from Olbia in some way descend from the Archimedes planetarium, or was it even a fragment of it? In principle, we think that it was part of a copy of the planetarium, or a similar mechanism that inspired it, but from this three considerable problems emerge. First, it is unlikely that a similar mechanism could be made solely on the basis of the work on sphere making, in which Archimedes spoke of it since whoever made the Antikythera calculator would have used brass and curved teeth, two fundamental aspects that had already been forgotten. Archimedes was also a follower of the Pythagorean doctrine, which discouraged from disclosing the most intimate secrets of knowledge and is therefore unlikely that these details and perhaps others were disclosed by him. Nor can we assume it is the work of a disciple of Archimedes, because the ancient writers left us a considerable amount of information about him, but never mention any disciples. Nor, finally, can you think it a copy of the original planetary built in its image, because it would have been necessary to disassemble the original and it is unthinkable that the owner could have afforded to do that. Finally, there is a decisive argument to propose the identification of the wheel from Olbia as part of the Archimedes planetarium, 
We have seen that there is no mention of it after 169 BC, and that it certainly was not in Rome when Cicero speaks of it in 54 BC. We do know, however, that its last owner, Marcus Claudius Marcellus, was commander of the Roman army and in Spain to quell a revolt in 152 BC by the Iberians and that he died in 148 BC in a shipwreck when sailing from Rome to North Africa sent by the Senate as an ambassador to King Massinissa. It is plausible that he may have brought the planetarium, especially to the embassy, as a display of his power and Rome itself to the court of a foreign sovereign. We know from a lot of data that when the Roman aristocrats were sent to the provinces with governmental functions, they boasted with status symbols which were more effective than their rank. It is well known that for an emergency trip from Rome to Spain and Africa and back, the preferred route was the one that touches northeastern Sardinia. Olbia would have been the first stop after leaving Ostia, namely the port of Urbe, Rome. Then it cannot be a mere coincidence that in the years 160 to 140 BC, which the archaeological data layer where gear wheel of Olbia was excavated is dated to, the last owner of the planetarium had three opportunities to stop over in the port of Gallura. Perhaps one of these occasions the device broke and was discarded. A fragment of one of its wheels ended up in a layer of earth where it was found in July 2006. A great disaster for Marcus Claudius Marcellus but very fortunate for the history of science because it gives us the only mechanism made by the great scientist of Syracuse.